You've heard of the Oscars. You've heard of the Junos. But have you heard of the Teddies? It is an award given out by the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, but it's probably not the kind of award you want to win. Here to explain what the Teddies are and who the winners or losers are this year is our friend Franco Terrazano, the boss of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation himself. Franco, great to see you again. Hey, thanks for having me on, Ezra. Well, you know, uh, it's great to see you. I, I think uh, sometimes there are a, there's a prize for a loser. Like in golf, they always have one prize for the highest score, uh, just to make the losers feel better about themselves. Tell me about the Teddies. That's not an award you want to win, am I right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So this was our 26th annual Teddy Waste Awards, where we give golden pig trophies to you know the politician and bureaucrats who go above and beyond in wasting taxpayers money with the funnest or the funniest and worst examples of government waste uncovered over the past year now the teddies are actually named after a former federal appointee ted weatherall who back in the 90s had a raft of dubious expenses including a 700 dollar meal expense to the taxpayer for two and remember back in the 90s 700 bucks nowadays that'd be like what over a grand so we just had a live event in calgary handing out these pig-shaped trophies to those politicians and bureaucrats who really deserve it wow imagine having that named after you i mean you know sometimes in science they name after a comet after someone and they're forever remembered for that discovery but having a, a waste award named after you, that's going to be a heavy burden. You know, uh, a $700 meal is, is shocking. It reminds me of that phrase, I think it was in the Canadian Parliament years ago, a million here, a million there, pretty soon you're talking real money. I mean, these people just throw around taxpayers' money like it's monopoly money. And um, But I guess you got to laugh about it, because what's the alternative, I suppose, is to cry. Tell us who this year's winners are or I, I i guess we're the losers as taxpayers but who's who are the winners this year well let's start with the uh, federal government waste winner cbc president Catherine tate right handing out 15 million dollars in bonuses at the cbc in 2023 you know remember in 2023 just before christmas tate announced hundreds of layoffs all while begging for more taxpayer cash. You know, Tate is claiming the cupboards are bare, the cupboards mm. are bare, we need more taxpayers' money. Well, apparently they're not so bare that the CBC isn't handing out, you know, millions of dollars in bonuses. So Tate is a very worthy recipient of the Federal Waste Award this year for all the bonuses they're paying out at that state broadcaster. You're so right. And she was just in Parliament, I think it was yesterday, and she was pressed on it because she claimed no, no, no bonuses, and she wouldn't answer the question. Let me show you a clip from yesterday. Um, there's a weird, I mean, it, there's this notion of unparliamentary language. You don't want to be too rude. And the Speaker of the House will say, tut, tut. It's weird that uh, MPs can't accuse each other of lying. That's against the rules. But lying itself is not against the rules. I don't know if that applies to committee witnesses. I don't think it does. But uh, I think we got ourselves a bit of a liar here. Take a look at this clip from yesterday. After, okay. Kate, have, have you been assigned a bonus for 2023? I realize the board hasn't signed off on it, but have you been assigned a bonus no, for 2023? No, I have 20, not. You have not been assigned a bonus for no, 2023? I have not. So for 2023, there is no bonus coming your way. I do not know that I have a bonus because the process, as we have described, for governor and council positions okay. is separate from performance pay. My process is that I will be evaluated by the board of directors. A letter of recommendation will go to the government, and the government will reflect upon whether or not I or other right. uh, so appointees Tate, would receive Ms. any Tate performance has, pay. Has, has the board package for that June meeting gone out? No. No. Okay, because you are a member of that board. I am. So you not only have a say with regard to bonuses for the top executives, yourself included, you have a say not only in March when you're a member of the management team, the most senior member of the management team, but then you get a second say at the board level. So with all due respect, you do have a fair bit of power in terms of bonuses. So I'll ask again, will you be up for a bonus at, in the consideration uh, at the board meeting in June? As I've said previously, there's a, this is part of a internal deliberation. It's an HR function, but, and we have to be respectful of the governance Tate, that rules the, the CBC Radio Canada. But you do uh, know the answer. 
I absolutely do not know the answer have, until have, I've had that de- and until I've had those deliberations okay. with the board of directors. I cannot preemptively say what the results of a converse, a future conversation will sure, be. Sure, thirty nine seconds. You know what the recommendation is. You know what the recommendation is going forward to the board. I've, I think I've repeated myself enough to say these are matters that concern the organization that operates at arm's length like all crown corporations, but, and but I Ms. have Kate, to be respectful. That you, you are the senior member of the management team, which makes the decisions, seconds. and then those decisions get recommended to the board, seconds. which you are a member of the board. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you have access to information. Point of order, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, this decision-making. question has been asked, I think, six times now. Well, Franco, I, I mean, she is in a terrible position because either she admits uh, she gave herself a bonus and she says what it is, and she has the wrath of taxpayers for that, or she just brazens it out. I, I don't know. I think I, I think she is atrocious. I don't know if she's still flying back and forth from her house in Brooklyn to New York. She she did that for the longest time. She lived in New York and commuted back and forth to the office for the CBC. And and I can only imagine that we paid for those flights. Okay, that's Catherine Tate. I think you're right. I think she's atrocious. I even think some CBC staff really really hate her um, b- because she's such a bad look for them. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Tell me about the provincial Teddy winner. So you've got 10 provinces and three territories to choose from there. Well, this year's winner went to the Alberta Foundation of the Arts. Okay, they spent $30,000 buying a Lethbridge artist to places like South Korea, uh, South Korea and New York Now, in New York, you see one of her paintings, and I think it could be best described as ants on a Pop-Tart, okay? Hmm. Then she went to South Korea, and the performance, if we can call it that, essentially just looked like her whopping around on a futon for like eight minutes. And what do taxpayers get out of this? Well, we get a $30,000 bill, uh, courtesy of the Alberta Foundation of the Arts. So honestly, like, you got to see this video. We'll be sharing it online at taxpayer.com on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. But once you see it, you will be shocked that taxpayers were forced to pay for this artist to go to fancy places like South Korea, New York. I got two questions for you. The first is, it's called the Alberta Foundation for the Arts, which implies it's a charity. Um, But does it get government money? I presume it does since you're the Taxpayers Federation. Yeah, this was... Go ahead. This was $30,000 of taxpayers' oh, money double, to fly okay. this artist. See, that's crazy. I mean, if some rich person wanted to give 30000 out of their own money to pay for this weird junket, Who cares? I'd yeah. say, you know what, fill your boots, shakuna songu, as the French say, everyone has their taste. But for taxpayers to be pressed to do that. Now, I got to say the obvious, Alberta has, at least in name, a conservative government, Danielle Smith, and before her, uh, Jason Kenney. So this is going on. You can't pawn this off on the liberals or the NDP. This is allegedly in the most conservative government in the country. Well, Ezra, and this is just like the bigger problem when it comes to government waste more broadly, is that a lot of times you have the unelected bureaucrats that are running the show, right? Like you have these politicians, even sometimes um, the best politicians, if we're being generous here, They may want to cut spending, but then you have so many unelected bureaucrats that are really running the show in government that are making these types of decisions. So what you got to do is you have to have the unelected politicians really go in there and clean house and and totally rearrange who's making the decisions, Mm -hmm. right? So this is one of the problems we see all the time is that you have these unelected bureaucrats spending buckets of taxpayer cash, essentially just looking for things to spend other people's money on. Yeah, you know what? When I see something called the Alberta Foundation for the Arts, I actually get a good feeling about it because I like all three words. I like Alberta, I like the arts, and foundation, in my mind, I think, oh, this is a charity. People are being asked to do something selfless, donate a few bucks. Like I, But it's actually a deceptive name because it's a the bureaucrats, taxpayers fund for, I mean, and art, I guess, is in the eye of the beholder. I, I think that if we wrapped up so many of these government charities and reduced taxes, people would, I think people would give generously. I mean, historically, the arts always had private benefactors. The Renaissance itself, they didn't tax 
people in Florence. It was the patrons. It was the Medici's, a very wealthy family, who said, we want to be known forever, so we're going to make this eternal art. I don't think it was extracted from working people in Florence. I, th I think if we encouraged a spirit of charity and reduced taxes to let people have a few extra bucks in their pocket, we would see charity naturally occurring. And by the way, people would be more insistent that their charity money was spent wisely, don't you think? Absolutely. I think you're uh, I think you're absolutely on the money with that one there, Ezra. Now, I got to go into one more example, at least, okay? The okay. Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, for okay, this is the big one. <laughs> it's our most prestigious award, folks. <laughs> you know, Bev Oda has won the award, uh, Bombardier, Governor's General. This year's award is a little-known slush fund that you may not have heard of and that is now axed in large part because of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation work on this, but it's the Mission Cultural Fund. Okay. Now we and first again, very about vague. This. It's these it's these names, Franco, because who could be against a mission cultural fund? Tell me what it really yep. does, though. What's it really about? Well, listen to this. Okay, listen to this. So it was a federal slush fund in Global Affairs Canada, and they they spent money like a ten thousand dollar birthday party for Margaret Atwood. Oh come on, in New York. Oh yep. come on. She surely or she has her own friends. She can have her own birthday party. Yeah, she's got her own money too. Yeah. Uh, and then how about this one? A fifty-two thousand dollar photo exhibit for rock star Brian Adams, so he could show off his totally awesome photos, including one of Trudeau. And folks, oh that's why he I've got just it. started. You know, I like Brian Adams. I grew up listening to him. I think he's a good egg, from what I can tell, and he is a good photographer. He's also a gazillionaire who has all sorts of corporate support. His music label. He. Why taxpayers would have to pay for Brian Adams, a literal rock star, to have an exhibit? I think you gave away the answer, though, because he took a picture of Justin Trudeau. I think that's why. Well, OK, folks, and here's a warning. If you got children in the room, it <laughs> might get a little crazy. But this was from the government, OK? They spent $8,800 on a sex toy show in Germany. 8,800 bucks on a sex toy show in Germany. It gets worse. Uh, we found this description from the government of another musical, a lesbian pirate musical featuring physically disabled performers uh, who met in love while cross-dressing as male pirates. Your money paid for that performance. And you know what, though? After all of this, uh, the Mission Cultural Fund, they stuck with it until there was one thing that finally put it over the top. And what was the one thing that finally killed the Mission Cultural Fund? I don't fund? want to even guess. I have, I'm too scared to guess, Franco. Sex stories from senior citizens in other countries, okay? So the federal government dropped 12 grand paying senior citizens in other countries to talk about their sex lives in front of live audiences. And folks... These weren't even Canadian seniors. Ezra, we were outsourcing old people's sex stories. <laughs> you know what? I, there, I've got a million questions about that that pop into mind, but I'll stick with the safe one, which is why on earth were we paying for that? You know, they just, I suppose every government when, I mean, Trudeau's been in office for nine years now. I suppose every government gets really, really comfortable spending other people's money. I bet a lot of this is the deep state, the the permanent bureaucrats who never change with the election. But um, I think there's a lot of room to cut the fat before we raise taxes on people. That's for That's sure. It. Franco, you guys are doing important work. And as we indicated a moment ago, it's nonpartisan work. What I like about you guys is you're willing to call out the overspending and waste of taxpayers' money, even and especially by conservative parties. And that's why people trust you, Franco, because they know you're not in anyone's pocket. They know you're 100% uh, membership supporters, like ordinary people, crowdfunding. And, and so you can call out, quote, our team, speaking as a conservative, and that's extremely valuable. So keep up the great work. What's the website people can go to check it out? Taxpayer.com. That's a great website. Taxpayer.com. There is Franco Terrazano, one of the good guys. Keep in touch, my friend. Thanks, Ezra. Appreciate okay. it. See you later. Stay with us. More ahead.